Hi, my name's Rob Johnson, Founder and Managing Director at Future Pit Training, and today I'm here with Elaine Briggs, Head of Education and Innovation, and we're going to talk to you about raising the bar. What is the Raising the Bar Report? So the Raising the Bar Report is an annual report produced by Future Fit Training uh, in partnership with UK Active and with support from Simspa. And every year we go out to industry, mainly to operators, and ask a series of, quest series of questions regarding workforce development and skills gaps with the aim of identifying those skills gaps and addressing them, providing solutions required to ensure that our workforce is seen as professional and up to date. 2018 marks the fourth edition of the Raising the Bar Report. When we set out four years ago to work with UK Active, we focused initially solely on identifying the skills gaps of exercise and fitness professionals. But each year we've tried to widen the scope of the survey to include more groups of people. So this year, for example, we looked and tried to identify the readiness of individuals to work with children and people with disabilities. Can you discuss some of the key findings from the report? The content of the report is drawn from survey statistics uh, from when we surveyed 50 of the largest employers in the industry. And over the last four years, we've tried to keep some of the questions the same. What's been really interesting for me is that there's been several skills gaps that have been identified every single year. Some things like commercial acumen is missing behaviour change skills are missing, social skills are missing, those are the top three skills. But what's been very, very um, important, I think, is that this report has started to influence changes to current qualifications. So in the past, those skills haven't been included in training programmes. So to get a personal training qualification, for example, they haven't been included. But now there's been a new qualification developed, or new professional standards developed by Simspa. And I know, Elaine, you played a part in that. So what do you think this report has done for that? Yeah, I think it's fully supported those, uh, that development of those standards. Since has created professional development standards across a number of different job roles, um, and they've put a huge amount of, of effort into it, and people have, from cross-section of the industry, have input into the professional development groups that have brought those standards to a point where the awarding bodies can now pick them up and create their own qualifications knowing that there is a minimum standard and that minimum standard includes things like behaviour change skills, commercial acumen, um, technology and tracking activity, that was never in standards before now but it's been recognised that personal trainers, fitness professionals need to know this sort of information. Never before have we had so many clients with so much access to the latest information on nutrition, um, they all wear Fitbits and wearable technology and we want to get beyond a point where the client knows more than the personal trainer or can access more information than the personal trainer. So I think the report's been really quite key in helping to in, inform that and inform the standards. And what I look forward to seeing is the difference in this report moving forwards once those standards are embedded in the, in the um, way of qualifications and that's what new people will be undertaking when they enter the industry. The next really interesting statistic for me is over the minimum period of time that people believe that personal trainers should have trained or completed a qualification in order to be work ready. And I know this is something that we've discussed and we've championed for since before the report began four years ago. Um, and once again, the statistics, what the operators are saying, is that actually they believe that people should be on programme or in training for six months plus in order to get those skills and I think moving forwards I think those professional development standards will help to inform the time that people are on training as well there is a, a minimum time in the assessment um, strategy and I think that will really help create the personal trainers of the future with the skills not only the information that they've been given and the skills that they've been given on their course but then that time frame will give them the chance to go out into the workplace work in the gyms work with real life clients hone those communication and social skills and then be work ready when they finally hit the gym. I think you're absolutely right. I mean, I, I thought the statistic of 74% of employers thought that personal training qualifications should take no less than six months was a really interesting one because there's a disconnect 
between that and what's actually happening out yeah, in training okay. providers. You know, the vast majority of um, training providers are offering qualifications in personal training in as little as four to six weeks. Um, and that doesn't seem to match with what the operators are saying they would expect to be seen. And as you said, Future Fit have always um, worked to a much, much longer time scale because we believe in it's important that we have time to embed those skills. So it'll be interesting to see if we can find a way as an industry with the implementation of the new qualifications of lengthening that training, of lengthening particularly the assessment, because that's the key thing, Absolutely. the real life assessment. If we can get the real life assessment done over a period of time, I think we might start to get um, better informed, better qualified personal trainers entering the industry. I think you're right, and I think people forget that actually it is about the assessment. So there's many, many good examples of, of excellent training out there and training programmes delivered in a variety of different ways. We use a mix of e-learning, uh, workshops. Um, we use all sorts of different ways to deliver our training. But what we do ask is that people then have the opportunity to go out, hone those skills, practice those skills, and they're assessed in the workplace using those skills. And I, I don't think there's any surprise really that that statistic then leads on to the skills and knowledge gaps um, where 87% of people said that candidates enter the sector with unrealistic expectations which creates a huge amount of churn but that's not really a surprise if people think they can get qualified in four to six weeks and then be able to go out and earn quite a large amount of money as a personal trainer when in reality they hit the gym They've then got to start from the, the bottom up. They've got to build a client but base. They've got to start learning their trade. And they've, they've got, got to yeah. put into place those, those business skills. Um, and I think, as, as you've mentioned before, they're building a business from scratch. And that's why they have such unrealistic expectations. They expect that they're going to get their qualification and then just start and earn a lot of money. They can earn a lot of money, but it's going to take time. It's like any other person entering... Um, the world of business. If it, any, you know, I don't think there's many other places where individuals who are self-employed would suddenly expect to enter an industry and earn immediately. Businesses take one, two, three years to become successful. Personal trainers is exactly the same. And I think that's what training providers need to be doing. They need to be properly informing their candidates, their students, and make sure they have those expectations, work closer with corporate organisations, employers, so that there is a marry-up between the two. If we can achieve that, then we might start to see less churn, better qualified people, more retention, and hence a better industry. So I think what we're saying is then that this report has been pivotal over the last four years, and that we are now getting to a point with, thanks to SIMSPA, creating these professional development standards. So there is a solution to this, and the solution has started and once those qualifications come out and people start to undertake them in a realistic time frame, working in a realistic working environment with real people, um, employees should start to see that the personal trainers of the future have those skills, um, will stay longer, and the workforce is much more professional. I agree. So where now for raising the bar? I think as you said, Elaine, now that we have the new professional standards from Simspur, What's important is that awarding organisations, training providers and other stakeholders get hold of these and implement them. We need to see the raising of the, raising of the bar of the qualifications. We need to see that implemented and we need to see changes happen. I would agree and I think raising the bar has been pivotal over the last four years. Um, I think there's still work to do, as you say, um, with all areas of the sector working together to, to raise the bar. I think the report started the conversation and this next 12 months I would really like to see that conversation carried on throughout the year. So I think that next year we won't be producing a raising the bar report, instead what we'll be doing is holding three or four round tables throughout the year with key industry operators and we're going to go further than industry operators, we're going to bring together a number of different um, voices from industry. Um, and have some really good discussions, taking certain points, some of the ones that we've raised from the Raising the Bar report this year, and really looking at what's the next step, what solutions can we put in place, how can we go further than professional development standards, 
Um, and I think that'll be a really exciting way to take Raising the Bar forwards for the next 12 months.